I back think on? I think we're back. I think yeah, yeah. I see myself. I see you guys. But let's let's bank on it. I think we are live. Are we live? I don't know. Yeah. I have a I have a I have an old video I'm looking at right now. So oh, okay, we're actually live. <laughs> it was changing the map to uh, to Huddersfield that uh, that broke the PC. Okay. So you can never again ask for. A change. My bad, my bad. Yeah. No, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, wh what actually happened when you were picked up by Big? How did that happen? Because I know that uh, the team was looking for... Um... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, basically, I was get on my train back from Copenhagen Games. I was coming back from my airport to um, my house, and I remember getting a message from the gear, like, bro, would you want to join Big? And like, he followed me first, and I was like, I know what this means, like... I've been around the block long enough to see what's coming here. He's like, "Yo, would you want a chance in big?" And I, I like, I was like, "Uh, maybe." But inside, I was saying, "100 percent." You know, <laughs> I, was, I was trying to play it calm, like, "Yeah, maybe. I, I'll see. I have some offers." <laughs> I was just lying basically to him. Um, and then, like, I kept on going in underneath tunnels and stuff, so my internet kept on cutting out, so I couldn't reply. So I was like freaking out, like, "Man, I want to reply. I want to reply." Like, I didn't want him to like ask someone else. Um. <laughs> When I got home, as uh, I messaged the owner of Epsilon. No, I didn't actually. I just told him, yeah, I can join, don't worry, without even asking, because the owner is a big idiot from Epsilon, and he has no idea what he's doing. Because uh, he stopped me from leaving before, because I had offers before in Epsilon. So I was scared to tell him. Um, but then everything got sorted, and then I got picked up, and he basically picked me up because he said he thinks I'm really good. Uh, I think it was simply because I had good stats. That's, like, one of the only reasons. Um... Why would you say that? Because not a single player on the team knew I was joining before I joined. Like, I remember messaging Tabson one time, saying, yo, bro, are you ready for us to smash FPL together? And he just said, what do you mean? And I was like, and I just said, Whoop. I said, whoops, wrong guy. Like, I wasn't even an FPL yet, and you know what I mean? <laughs> so they didn't know I was joining. Um, and I remember none of them, like, even knew how I played, like, I didn't even watch any of my demos or anything, so I just got completely picked up by Legia. <laughs> and then, yeah, I joined and we played some counter strain So for how long did how long did it take? I mean, so they were told the, once you the, got to gym. When were they actually told then? Uh, what that was, what they what they wanted me? You mean? No, no. When was the rest of the team told then? Since, um, oh, like when I turned up on practice, they didn't even know who was turning up. Really? Because it was between <laughs> me or Ottawan. Yeah. Oh, the Finn, yeah. Yeah, so I just rocked up like, yo, bitches, and they're like, oh, shit, we have this fucking idiot to deal with. I'm like, yo, boys, <laughs> let's fucking get this shit. <laughs> Let me play some games. So far, I mean, we, we you've talked about this a couple of times, the integration into the team and yeah. and, and the fact <laughs> that you guys, that they had also that they had to change to English and all that, but what were, like, the first few weeks like? Then, if that's how it all started, it, it, has, it must have been a little bit chaotic then. Well, not chaotic, because, like, I didn't play for the first month because they still had to play uh, relegation LAN and Pro League stuff, mm. and they got Pro League. And then we had to play some weird LAN without Gob. So we didn't even play with a lineup, you know? We were practicing and Gob was just in coach, just saying like what I was doing wrong or right. There wasn't many rights, there was just a lot of wrongs. And I noticed very quickly like, oh god, I just do everything wrong. So I lost my confidence pretty quick in myself, but, like it wasn't their fault, I was just being a bitch. And then, yeah, I think the most weirdest thing for me was getting p past the f of seeing them as, like, pros and, like, my friends, you know? And it took me maybe two or three months to actually see them as friends and not... All my, like, I'm walking around the gaming house and I'm like, oh, shit, there's Tapson. Instead of saying, like, yo, there's Yarosh, you know, like, my friend. And, like, oh, there's Nex, because they were, like, my two favorite players for a long time. And I remember the first time I met Gowa, and I just saw him and I just went... Fuck. <laughs> like you know that overpass clip when he's like over a pass and he just says fuck. fuck I just kept on <laughs> saying that to him because I just couldn't believe I was in the same house it was so stupid um, but yeah I've, that was the hardest thing for me it took maybe two or three months to see them as friends and not uh, just like uh, idols I guess and then once I saw them different and it was a lot easier so did you ever talk to them later on about how how they perceived your joining the team yeah they do all the time they tell me how much i've changed i was like a, a huge idiot um all the good stuff all the good stuff 
But yeah, then then events happen. Then Counter Strike happened. Uh, yeah, then we play some games. What 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 were some of the highlights for you? I mean, there's one big highlight, obviously, that 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 you guys also put out in um, in your own documentary that everyone can see and follow. What what happened uh, reaching the final in Cologne? But from your perspective, uh, just now that we have you here, what, what was that like? The final of Cologne was. Probably the most insane experience you could ever go through is like through gaming, it was one of the best, I guess, because it's one of the biggest arenas, like a twelve thousand people, I think it was or eleven thousand, and when the feeling when we beat phase, holy fucking shit, man, I swear there was no no better feeling. it was so crazy, like just when i I remember there was one round I beat Garden in the one v one and I just fucking threw my headset off and just stood up because we're like it was such a like game changing round. And then when we won the game and we went into the final, it was it was kind of crazy because I stayed behind and signed everyone's stuff, and there was like it took me three hours because there was so many people, you know. And that's when I realized how many people were actually there. And just every time you get one kill, the whole like stage shakes and stuff. It was it was pretty sick. It was uh, it was better than the major for me, like a lot better. Well, you because you, that's funny because you're that was home soil in London yeah. and and your stats were a lot better if I remember correctly I think you actually had pretty nice that's one of your highest land ratings after joining I think it is actually um, not counting uh, the QI international that you guys did um, so how come I mean is that because it is a German team because I remember there were a lot of talk analyst desks and about you, the storyline that was that you were like the only UK player to actually, apart from, of course, uh, complexity, um, who who was actually there. I mean, how can it be bigger for you to play in Cologne? Um, just because of the way the crowd took to us and took to me more specifically. That's where the whole smoothie chant really started, I guess. And I think it was, yeah. yeah. Just... I don't know. I think it's because it was the first one, you know? And the first one's always the best. And it was like our first real taste of success and it was just fucking crazy. I mean, it must have been pretty wild to play at home then, still. Well, yeah, but like, we played... It was like killing a fucking quick MM game and just getting smashed by a bunch of cheaters, man. Like, I played on stage and just got crushed in front of my home people and then just had to go home. (laughs) Like, it was so shit. I mean, to be fair, though, like, I heard your name being screamed around the arena for, like, hours on and afterwards. Yeah, I wasn't even there. I took a train instantly home. <laughs> um, and then I was on the stream, and people were still screaming my name, and I was like, fuck, man, I've got to go back. So I came back down just to do a signing session the next day. I mean, you got to please the home cl- crowd. I mean... uh, the only reason I came back because it, it was kind of a situation of it will never happen again. And I swear, man, everywhere I went in that arena, 100 people would stop me and ask for photos. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like, I remember finishing my signing session, and I was like, right, boys, I'm going to nip to the toilet. And on the way to the toilet, like, no bullshit, it was like five steps away. Maybe 250 people came up to me. Two of two have just signed their shit, and they were like, hey, can you send this for my friend? Hey, my son wants this. Like, so many mums were coming up to me because the kids knew I would say no to them, so they'd send their parents, like a 50 year old woman. I'm like, I can't say no to this fucking bitch, can I? I said, fuck, man, I need to sign this shit. Like, a huge ass mouse pad that's like fucking two meters long. I'm like, fuck, man, I can't be asked with this shit. But I just had to sign everything, and I, I, like, I nearly pissed my pants, so I just gave up. I was like, fuck this, man, I'm not even going to the toilet anymore. I just started another signing session in the middle of a corridor. It was so stupid. <laughs> yeah, that happened. But like ten, maybe like fifty parents came up to me, like no joke. And they obviously they, they know this. I mean, they they know you wouldn't say all to like a middle aged woman, right? Yeah, of course. But like, I mean, I still wouldn't say no to a kid. But there's more chance of me saying no to like an eighteen year old than there is a fifty year old woman, <laughs> because the woman's like she's right? just so sweet. I'm like, man, I can't, like, I can't tell her to fuck herself, can I? So I just have to do it. Yeah, oh, man. I signed a lot of stuff for parents. Mothers and stuff were like messaging me on Twitter and stuff, like, <laughs> "Hey, can you come to this like seat block to sign?" Like, I'm just like, "Dude, this is out of order, man. Like, let me live my life." I actually thought about that when messaging you to to join the show originally. Like, the the fact that a player like you would have open DMs is kind of crazy to me. Have you... Oh, I enjoy it, man. When I play bad, I just look instantly at my DMs and just enjoy the hate I get. It's so fun. People are like, dude, go kill yourself. You need to get kicked, you ugly piece of shit. And so I'm like, yeah, man, give me more. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Your feet well, up, that's, a, that's a new approach. We haven't yeah, done I that never before. heard that. 
<laughs> yeah, I've got something that I don't get. Like, I've been getting flamed since I started playing CS. Like, since I've been good, I've been people have been talking shit. It's like, I'm so used to it at this point. It's kind of like it's whatever. I mean, I also remember your mom saying on Twitter that it's always been like, this. yeah, like that you have always been like this. So I guess. It's... Oh no! Like, I'm not like trying to fake who I am or anything. I'm just a piece of shit, man. Like, that's just how it is. Like, I'm not. I mean, big notice it actually. The notice I wasn't a very nice human. But, like, they've changed me a lot. So, I guess I'm like 25% good now. But, like, <laughs> before, I was like a pure cunt. Oh, so, so, the people who watch you now and think that you're toxic or have this problem with your openness and your brazenness, they should just think about how much worse it could be? Not. No, no, that I guess. I mean, just a sense of like how I would, like I just wouldn't think for other people's emotions. You know, I just react on mine. I'm like now I care for like other people more than I did. I think. Hmm. For example, one one example I could think of. I was at the big house, and I always used to just blast this speaker here. It's like some wireless speaker I got, uh, and it blasts music like super fucking loud, like insanely loud, and um. The last time I was there, I asked, hey, should I use this? Because it was like five in the morning. And they're like, and they're like, no, but <laughs> thank you so much for asking. Like, you're so sweet, you know. But before, I would never ask. Like, I would just blast <laughs> that shit four blasts as loud as I could five in the morning. Because like an old woman lives beneath us, you know. She's like 90. And she always complains about sound. So that's just like one exa- like small example where I'm like actually thinking about other people. Whereas before, I would have just done that shit straight away. So she comes up, I guess, when you win big big matches online then, huh? And I mean, we don't really play any big games from there because our team's full of onliners. We let everyone play at home, not at the house, so ah. everyone can be fully comfortable. That's why we did so good in Pro League Online, because me and Tizian were at home, and me and Tizian are like the biggest onliners ever, so, yeah. Okay, um, so... I got uh, a message from my mum, boys. Yeah, that's... <laughs> you can tell her that you're on. She'll probably tweet about it. It's going to be good for our... <laughs> <laughs> Did she say that? Yeah, stop saying the same. Did she tell she you did. off? Yeah, she hates oh, the cool. Ah, that is a bad word to use. This is a family show, by the way. Um, oh, really? No, no, you can. No, you're work. fine. You're oh, fine. Poor. The first, the first show we did had Sponge on it, and I think we kind of set the president. You know, yeah, he swears a lot, right? He swears a lot. Australians tend to do that. Um, so, um, when I was doing the, we always do like a guest profile thing for this. Um, and I was trying to come up with an example of of like your. I guess the, your your ability or propensity for dividing like fans into two groups, and I I remember specifically, and we talked about this on the show when when Moses was on um, the the Mouse Sports incident in Star Series, <laughs> where you guess the the rivalry, I guess, or, or what There's was no rivalry. Yeah, they just got it wrong. It simple yeah. as they were just wrong. So, um, <clears throat> and obviously there were a lot to that. There was like the the screen crashing, and there was the yeah. auto sniper miss by. I mean, when all these things happen, you tend to like be well. This is this is your problem that you're taking this in a certain way, and I cannot be kind of asked to uh, to take. I mean, what when stuff like that happens? What actually happens in your mind? Um, so the whole misbite situation <clears throat> at the major, we rebought twice during some games during the group stage, and I'm in my head, I'm thinking, well, the major is the biggest event in the world. The most prestige, of course, if you can do it at that event, you can do it at any other event. Like, dude, I've been a pro for seven months, and, and this was, like, my fifth LAN, you know? It's not like I've been at, like, Chris J, or those guys have been playing, like, five LANs a month, you know what I mean? So I'm just, like, super new. I was being genuine, like, I don't want to use the auto sniper. Can you let me buy an AWP? Like, can we rebuy? And, I, and he just called me a retard, and I'm like, all right, fuck you then, bitch. Like, I'm going to fucking blow your brains out with this shit. And I just got, like, 12 kills in three rounds. I was like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> like... I didn't want to use the gun, but if you're going to make me use it, then I'll just kill you. I think the word used was Doomhammer, right? Yeah, I said, now, now you're going to see the Doomhammer, of course. And but then, um... The, the the put, to be fair, there was also the... the um, I think what he said after was, what's that, it, was that it was also your manner, uh, your behavior during the match, so... Yeah, but I don't know what that means, because I've spoke to him myself, on my team half, and they said that he, they don't care about the shouting at all. Hmm. I'm like, hmm... So what do you like? Why would they be mad then if they don't care about me screaming? Because everyone knows I scream, even though I haven't been shouting for the last few events. I'm not sure why. I've just been playing too bad. But yeah. Um. If, so if it wasn't for the shouting, and then I found out apparently they thought I was lying about the screen crashing, and I'm like, dude, like 
with literally two of you online, and I didn't need to fake a screen crash. Like, do you think I cared that much about faking as? How the fuck do you fake a screen crash? <laughs> like, I was just playing, and like, it was so like they flashed over T mid, and my whole screen went white, and then it froze, and I was like, why am I still flashed? Like eight seconds later, like I'm playing, I'm like, why am I still blind? And I just took my hands off my keyboard, and I looked at the admin, and I was like, dude, fucking do something, you idiot! Like, what the fuck? Like my screen's crashed. I take my hands off, and I start unplugging shit. And then we do damage like 25 seconds later, but like I didn't realize I could type, you know, because it was only my my monitor that crashed, nothing else. But I'm saying to my team like, dude, I've crashed, I've crashed, and everyone's looking at me moving in game like, dude, he hasn't crashed, what the fuck? Because I like to troll a lot. But then they didn't like dot stop, and then they just thought I was lying, and I'm like, well, I'm not gonna lie about a screen crash, am I? Like this is so stupid. Why then... not? Because that, that that let me interject here, because if you're used to, I mean, this is obviously who you are, right? And yeah. and you can be a big troll, and you, you you admit it yourself. So why wouldn't Mouse Sports think that you were lying about this? Well, that's because your persona was known. Before no, no, no. This. my persona is known as doing little trolls that are like funny to me, but not really funny, you know. But like a screen crash in a LAN for three hundred k, like I'm not that stupid. Like I'm a re- I'm a really stupid person, but I like I'm not that stupid. Hmm. And that's just how. Like if you think anyone would do that, then it's just retarded. So do you ever take any of these things to heart? Like, cause... No, of course not. Because like, if I lost, if I was in a top three team in the world and I lost to a team that you should be beating, I would also be really mad. Like, I did it when we lost to Fraxes. I tweeted some stuff that I shouldn't have. Like, I do it all the time. So, I mean, he still hasn't said anything to me, but he said that there's no hard feelings, apparently, but, like, he still doesn't really like me. So I just said, whatever. That could so... be caused by anything. You know, it's hard for us to be in his mind, know. you know? <laughs> But uh, so, do you ever stop and think? Like, uh, I know you enjoy reading the the hate DMs, <laughs> but <laughs> do you ever stop and think? Like, okay, this is, it's getting a little bit out of hand because, I mean, it's pretty clear that, and these these are HLTV comments, but from the article we wrote, there are a lot of people who generally I don't really I think really don't like you. Like, do you ever stop and think? Hmm, maybe I should. Uh, think about how can I better myself or my image or yeah, but. If I better my image, then I get a bunch of people who are, like don't really like me for who I am, and it's like I'm not. Um, boy, I nearly said something I shouldn't have. Then Jesus Christ, um, I'm not like some people in the scene who are fake, like super fake, on Twitter. They, you can clearly see their Twitter's not run by them, and they do like one tweet themselves a year because if not, they'll get into a lot of trouble. I'm not going to name any names, but you can kind of guess But it. you were close to, weren't you? <laughs> I mean, my, my team do, like, look at my social media, but now I'm, like I said, I used to, I just troll a lot. If you read 90% of my Twitter, if you scroll down my Twitter feed, that, like, you don't, you don't see the person I am. You just see my tr- my 10% of my troll side where I'm just like, wow, this, like, I, I start laughing to myself before I tweet, you know? Wait, let me check some of my tweets. It's just like, <laughs> like who tweets before they go on an interview? Time to go on a little Hitchell TV interview soon. I'm going to wear a cute jumper for you guys. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, who the hell tweets that shit? That's it. But like, I found that funny before. The I other the other guests we've had would be like, very proper and like, oh, I'm going to be joining here. Come to me. Yeah, exactly. But I'm like the complete opposite. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not going to change my image or the way I like, I don't know, joke about things or find stuff funny because it's just who I am. Like, if you don't like me, then you don't like me. Do you think there's too little of it then in the scene? Because, I mean, we were talking, we wanted to do a topic about this, like the banter or the, um, is there enough of it or is there too little where I think we're at a good place, but I could always use some more because, I mean, for some of us, it's great that you can actually have some of this stuff that's actually easy to, like, um, to read into. Like, it's easy to see when it's for fun and when it isn't. Um, um, maybe, but like the that's the thing with British people. Like, this is why UK people love me so much because they can tell the difference between my banter and when I'm being serious, you know. But there's a very, very fine line between me trolling and me being serious because if you ask any of my friends or my teammates, they don't even know when I'm being serious anymore. Like, we'll be having a serious team talk and they'll say something and I'll just nod my head and they're like, "Dude, are you even listening?" Or like, "Are you joking or something?" I'm like, "Dude, I'm being serious." And they're like, "Are you sure you're being serious?" I'm like, "Yes, I'm being serious." <laughs> Because I just troll so much, you know, like all the time. But it sounds it sounds like very counterproductive in some situations. Ah, one hundred percent. But I, f- I just giggle to myself, man. I just like to laugh, and if I don't laugh, that's when I get tilt and start playing bad. Hmm. I mean, speaking of speaking of like you being kind of emotional and, and your Twitter behavior, basically, um, like how much of what you say and what you, especially like regarding your own performance, because you seem to comment on that a lot. Like obviously, yeah, a lot of players don't do it um, for um, for one reason or another, but you do it a lot. 
I just wonder how much of it is actually serious. How much? How? Oh, everything I t- about myself is fully serious because I know how good I really am, and I know how good I can be, and I know how good I have been. And regardless of like, sometimes when I say to my team, "Oh, I was like so good in epsilon," you know, they always just hit me with a, "Oh, you was playing against lower skill people." I'm like, dude, I used to prac against the best teams, and I used to just addict them so hard it was insane. Like. I, I was just so good in Epsilon, it was crazy. So I know how good I can be. Like, I know my ceiling, you know? Do you think so that then... also maybe some people are, are, like, misinterpreting you? I mean, you're, you're, this is, of course, your person, but also, like, um, how smart you really are? That, that there are some people who think that uh, the facade kind of is everything? You know what um, I mean? Oh, yeah, there's, there's people who genuinely think that my Twitter feed is how I am. I'm, as I said, I'm quite stupid as a human, but like, I'm not that stupid overall. So if you actually speak to me without a headset on, I'm not that much of an arsehole and I'm quite a nice guy. I mean, that's what everyone tells me anyway when they speak to me. So I don't know. I, I, like, So that's why I don't really care what people say about me online because I, yeah, I spend a lot of my time online, but like when I go to LANs, I don't speak to people with a headset on, you know? So I'm like, I, I mean, I guess kind of a different person, but I just don't call people retards and shit. That's like the only difference. So. If you're not being a retard, then I won't call you a retard. And no one acts retarded in real life, so everyone gets along with me. Like, there's no pro who has met me in real life and hasn't liked me that I know of. <laughs> yeah. Imagine, you ask but, them, and every pro hates me. <laughs> that'll, be like a, like a, that'll be a common question for every other pro that comes on. You, you know what, I, I hope I don't offend you, but this kind of links you links you to some other British personality that tends to tends to troll a lot on Twitter and be sarcastic and people misunderstanding it. <laughs> Dude has great hair, by the way. Oh yeah, also he's a ginger, yeah. That guy? Just to they be a little bit more it. specific, yeah. Nah, but I mean, he's so, like way more asshole about it than yeah, I am. Like, yeah, he's true. like, oh, you don't agree with my opinion? <laughs> like, okay, calm the fuck down. You know, like I just tweet something and if you call me an asshole, I'll just laugh at you. But like, I don't fight with you back and like say, oh, I'm better than you. Some guy said Tom Biz. <laughs> Nah, we have great hair, that's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, <laughs> like, I, I won't compare myself. I mean, I, I guess I actually find some of the stuff that foreigners say is kind of funny. But, yeah, I don't know. That guy's it, bit, so bit the, too smart for me. That's, you know, in this day and age, like, the most of the big teams will have, they'll have a lot of sponsor, sp- sponsors to please. They'll have big PR Dudes, they'll have press, you know, heads of press. They'll have, they'll have people taking care of the image of the brand. Um, so, did this ever happen in big? Like, did anyone, did anyone, anyone ever come to you and say, "This has got to stop"? I mean, what, my, or you went too far and this and that. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I of course, dude. Have you not seen some of the bullshit that I tweet? <laughs> I get like once a week. <laughs> of course, yeah. I mean, mostly when I'm talking shit about other teams is when they come and like stop me. But other than that. Um, eh, not really. Other than like stuff with, if I take a picture of my mouse pad and I'm like using a QCK heavy, then I have to like hide the steel series sign. Like other than that, not really. It's a lot better now because there's like fines put in place, so like I ain't trying to get fined. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, so it's made me react like, like think way more before I do stuff, which is a lot better because I normally don't think before I do anything. Funny thing is also that like for for someone with all the prejudices that. Europeans, we Europeans have against each other. You'd think that like a German team and a German organization wouldn't take very kindly to someone who's a troll 90% of the time. Was that ever an issue? Like, do you think, obviously there will be cultural issues in game or in making the team work, but, but does it also account for your personality? Um, no, this, I mean, they say they like me a lot. I don't know if they actually do. You, that's the question you guys left to ask them, but um, yeah, I don't know. Like they've, at the beginning, they, they were like kind of weirded out. They were like, wow, we literally can't tell if this guy is being serious or not. But when they realized, ah, okay. Um, he's just a good player. He likes to have a laugh. And he like wants to learn. Like we can put up with him being a troll, you know. Um, I get along really well with like the owners and stuff. So, and they like my personality. So I, I don't think there's a problem with it. And they're like also, rich business people, so... <laughs> yeah. You could also argue that it's good for business in some occasions. Yeah, 100%. You know, that... Like, being controversial and shit like that, it's... that's that, I mean, that's why foreign is, like, so popular, right? Because it just talks a lot of shit and gets a lot of people to interact, and, like, that's what sponsors love, so... I guess, as retarded as I am on Twitter, it definitely helps, like, myself, like, promoting myself. So... I mean, again, if that was the reason for it, then I would tweet a lot more bullshit, but... It's just like a plus, you know, for who I am. So hmm. it helps. 
we actually talked about this a few episodes ago also like the having the fact that you guys that are still kind of young coming up uh developing yourself have this quick access to like a medium that'll that'll share your thoughts within seconds of you know not even thinking straight about a situation like this there and uh, you also said before that you kind of retracted some stuff that you maybe shouldn't have said um aren't you afraid that one day it's going to be like going like over the edge that you're going to do something so rash that that like it will hold your career for real I used to be, but now I value what I have a lot more than I ever have because now I have like an actual really good salary. I have really good team. I have a really good org behind me with really good sponsors, and that's something like I'm just happy, you know. Like my personal life, I I have enough money to do whatever I want. I can, if I want to do something, I can do it. If I want to buy something, I can buy it, and I like living like that, and I wouldn't want to change that. So. I'm and I'm like so scared of losing that that like I'm at the point now where I wouldn't tweet like some racist shit or call you know do something like that that could ruin it because I'm always thinking even like I don't trust people being on my PC like my friends being on my PC when I'm not around you know because they might like accidentally download a cheat or something <laughs> and get me banned like that's the sort of like length that I take it to now everything I'm focusing like not to ruin what I have so mm. yeah I think about it a lot like every day um so let's talk a little bit about your the performances that you had i mean obviously you you i oh think boy. i think you no i think you did for me anyway better than i thought you would have uh but that's Cheers, always mate. that's always very subjective you know <laughs> Fucked up, man. yeah like no um it's always hard to like when you do the uh four nationalities in one it's always very exciting to see what's going to happen and then also the fact that i mean that there were a lot of people who, who didn't know who you were um, but you had some pretty great events like uh and then then you also said to us in in interviews that it's been going a little bit downhill especially after the major yeah. um what's been what's been going on with that you know um there because uh, I, I we put out uh, a suggestion or ask we put out this tweet asking for for suggestions for this and there was one guy like uh what's it feel like whiffing shots you know but obviously um it feels really good <laughs> of course missing a shot that cost you a round that cost you the game and i did that like eight games in a row yeah uh yeah it feels great man it feels really good to sleep at night um knowing that you're out on a out on a uh of an event and it's like all your fault it feels super good man that's why i fucking hate open sometimes mm. it's like so important and there's so much impact it's like if you fuck up it's like shit man i really just lost the game uh, yeah. Did you ever know. think about like changing the style that you utilize? I mean, well, I have no style. That's my problem because I joined big, and I tried playing how I used to play, and it didn't work. So I had to learn their system, and then I learned their system, but I didn't really devote myself to it and learn it properly. So now I'm stuck in a weird position where, like, in my head, I make a decision, but I'm kind of scared to make the decision in game in case I get first fragged or I die in a three versus three to the point where I just wait for someone to tell me what to do and then I die. And it's like, that's it's no blame to my team. It's completely on myself because I brought it upon myself. I didn't watch the demos I should have. I didn't put much uh, effort as I should have in. But yeah, that's what happened. Like that's why over this Christmas I'm taking like a. Well, Friday, I've had a break of just no CS. Like, I haven't even launched CS a deathmatch at all. Like, that's not like me. I know me deathmatch a lot. And I'm playing only World of Warcraft. And when, <laughs> I, and when I come back, I'm going balls to the wall on CS. I've got my DM schedule back. And I'm going to do, like, an insane amount of um, demo watching to learn how to play my old positions again. Because I'm not sure if anyone with a brain has noticed that I don't play any of my old positions. I play B on Inferno. I play B on Overpass. I play... Like, what else do I play that's... I play Beyond Us 2, like... I've never played those positions, you know? So, I got... Bro so, think about this. I've been, like, this egotistical, high-fragging retard, being brought into the pro scene, and being told to play a bunch of new positions that I've never played before, against, like, people who have been playing the game for 10 years. And I've been, like... So, I feel like I haven't done too bad. You know what I mean? I, oh, I feel no. like I've worked with what I've done. I definitely could have done a lot better, and I could have done a lot worse. I was just uh, I was just commenting on the fact that you in the, in the last two interviews we did with you at least have been as you've been kind of 
I don't know. I want to say down, but you've been hard, hard on yourself, you know. Yeah, of course. But there's a reason I'm hard on myself, and that's because I know how good I really am. And, re and like, regardless of how much shit people talk to me and call me bad and say someone's better or smooth over red, it's just a lie. Like when I play good CS, I'm a really good player, and like you can't tell me otherwise. But hmm. recently, I haven't been playing any good CS, so <laughs> I've been pretty fucking shit. Um, but yeah, like I said, it, it's time for me to change that. If I put in this. If I actually do the work that I want to do and I still suck, then I'll just quit. Anyway, like, I don't care. Like, if I can't be as good as I think I can be, then what's the point in trying, right? So that's my that's my chance um, over Christmas. If I come back and I suck at the next major and one more event after that, then I'm off to go play Hearthstone. <laughs> I've had enough of this shit. So do you feel like it's just down to confidence then? Like well, these last 100%. couple of events especially? Like, uh, like individually... I have a very weird mindset towards CS, okay? So, if I'm playing, I, I, for me to have a lot of impact, I have to be doing something like every round, you know? Or every other round. I have to have some sort of impact in the round. But the way I'm playing in big, and because it's kind of set up in the way that we have a double orb, um, like, I can't make plays, you know? Like, I can, but only on my side of the map. Because... When you play against us on, like, let's say Dust 2, you know I'm going to be up in mid, and you know Tapson's going to be car. Like, every round, like, let's say six of the gun rounds out of nine gun rounds, that's going to be our setup, okay? Yeah. So it makes my life, like, really hard. Whereas before, I used to be a guy who one round I would be B, next round I'd be short, next round I'd be short again, next round I'm long, next round I'm peak peaking, you know what I mean? Like, that sort of play style. So I've had to adapt, like, super hard. But of course, I, I really don't care because... Would we be winning the stuff we won if I was doing what I wanted? Of course not. Tabson's like a top fucking five player in the world and like a top five orper, so I really don't care. Like I did at the beginning, uh, I'll, I'll openly say this, I had a huge ego, and I used to think I was better than Tabson, which is really funny actually. Because I was like, why are you giving Tabson my positions? And then I would play the positions in a prac, and then we would lose like 25-5. Then he would play, and we'd win like 30-0, you know? I'd be like, hmm... Okay, I'll just go play these other <laughs> positions. So I kind of just like, it took me like two or three months, but my ego finally like went. And I admitted who's better than the team, who isn't. Um, so that's that was like a hard learning process for me. I think that's pretty, I mean, a lot of young guys will go through that, right? Yeah, of course. I'm like an 18-year-old kid who's just had 1.3 rating against the, bit, like, the teams on HLTV. You know? I'm like, I think I'm the best player in the world. And it just wasn't the truth. Um, and I'm glad I learned that because the thing I've learned most importantly is as long as you're the best in your role, like, no one can replace you, you know? So regardless of what your role is, Lurker, Anchor, IGR, Orpa, like, second, fr whatever. As long as you put your effort in and watch your demos and learn all the tips and tricks in your positions, then you'll do what you need to do for the team for you to win. And, like, that's why Astralis is so good. So that's my goal for 2019. So you'll be moving on to be to a better also. team player. Sounds good. Let's move on to some of the questions that you ask for on your Twitter and we ask for on our Twitter. And there's, oh there's been a bunch of them. I picked the most um, PC friendly ones, I think, because uh, and this is also something that I wanted to talk to you about because we've been talking about you a lot and and, and your your performance. Yeah, enough about me, man. I'm a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> no, it's still about you. Um, uh, Harry or Nero Seals Go asks, and this is on our page. Uh, after being under GOP for a significant time period now, how would you say he is as a leader in the traditional sense? And this is not technically in game, I think with regards to dealing with downturns in confidence uh, mid-game? Well, he's perfect for it, I guess, because even when I'm 5 and 20, he still is trying to give me the orb. He constantly tells me that I'm a big, beautiful man. That's what he calls me, big, beautiful butterface, <laughs> or buttergesicht, that's butterface in German. <laughs> um, he tells, he constantly tells me, he says, dude, just go fuck them, you're the best opera I know, let's fucking go, let's do this shit. And like, if we're losing, he's always typing in chat, like, he'll type the cutest stuff, man, you have no idea. I remember we were losing against someone on Dust2, I can't remember. It was, I think it was at our last LAN. Who do, I think it was uh, Liquid. In the appeal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> it, it was like 49, there's no way we're going to win in a million years, we have like, what, like 3k? each like there's no chance they have like auto snipers and everything and he types guys don't worry we only lost some crucial rounds we can win this keep our heads up with like a dot dot and a d face you know and i read it <laughs> and i was just like oh like that's the cutest thing ever and he does that like every time we're losing he'll just write a super cute message about it it's super funny <laughs> and he just knows how to make everyone laugh and have a good time so yeah he's a he's a super funny guy really funny guy 
And he's been there forever, right? Like it's, this house, this also has to count for something for you, like the fact that not I want to I don't want to say unproven guy, but at least someone who who has yet to like be through go through what what he does that that you can link up with the exact polar opposite in the scene. Uh, what do you mean, sir? No, that uh, it's got to be big for you also. Haha. That 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 it's that he's such a veteran that, that he's been through so much, you know. And yeah, I, I can learn a lot from him just as a human because he's like forty. And <laughs> it's like old as hell, right? He teaches me a lot about life and in game. He's the best IGL by far. He creates the best strategies. He's he's insane, man. And he's changed his um, what's it called? Like his attitude a lot too. Apparently, he was like a bit more toxic before I joined, like way more toxic. And now he's like the perfect IGL. If someone makes a mistake, he doesn't just snap and say like, "Why did you do it wrong?" He he asks like, "Hey, could you have done this? Could we?" Do it? And it's just like a perfect way to improve and learn. It's I couldn't ask for like a better IGL to be honest. Okay, um, then there's the 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 eternal question for you about the UK scene. I'm sorry for yeah. this, but I know it's you knew it had to come at one point, right? <laughs> do you feel any pressure being the UK's biggest hope, or does some does coming from a region who have traditionally struggled at at CS:GO make things a little easier? I feel pressured just because I'm good from the UK. No, of course. No, not. I don't. This is like it's. Um, no, I know the question because I get it all the time. But yeah, of, of course not. I mean, when I'm playing, uh, even when I'm not playing, I, I'm at the point where I'm. I I don't feel like I'm from the UK. I just feel like a pro. You know, like you. Yeah. When like Sonny or Nico's playing from FaZe, I don't think he's playing as he one taps someone. Oh, I did that for Bosnia. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like he's kind of just trying to win the game, and he doesn't give a fuck where he's from. Like I could be from Zimbabwe for all I give a fuck. Like not, not even after the two hundred and fifty fifty year old women came and wanted to sign. Oh, of course not. Because if I was, even if I wasn't from there, if the whole arena was screaming like, let's say de- uh, not deaf, let's let's think of a random player like Rops, okay? Like Rops, Rops, like and so and and then someone saw his name on the back of his jersey, everyone would run up to him and ask for his stuff, like. The, the parents didn't know who I was. They just they just knew me as this kid who everyone's screaming his fucking name and no one will shut the fuck up. They're like, dude, who the fuck is this smoothie guy? Then they see me, they're like, whoa, he must be important. Like, I had, I, Dude, I was signing people's jerseys who didn't even know who I was. I remember this. I was at uh, some booth and I, some, guy, some guy was like, yo, can you sign my jersey? I'm like, yeah, man, sure. And I, I start writing smoothie and he's like, oh, are you smoothie? I'm like, I'm like, are you being... What? He's like, yeah, I thought you were someone else. He's like, he's like, what game do you play? And I'm just like, this is this guy's got to be trolling me. I'm like, I, I play CS sometimes. Let's try and listen for my name. He's like, what do you mean? And then like someone saw me and everyone started screaming smear. So <laughs> yeah, it that's what I mean. It's it doesn't really matter where I'm from. Like I don't care. Like even from the UK. I mean, you have to say that when you're from a scene that's such shit as yours, right? Where are you from? Um, <laughs> where do you think? What what would be your guess? Ginger guy. Yeah. Scotland? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Out of Denmark, probably? I am from the um, master race of CS. Yes. I'm Denmark? Uh, you're fine. You can have it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, moving on. Uh, <laughs> some of these we went over, actually, in your own uh, in your own answers. Um, uh, uh, going back to what you said about the fact that you know that you're a good player. Um, Nico Holleg asks, seeing your recent struggle in big, have you thought of playing more as a star to ut- utilize your skill set like Electronic and Navi instead of trying to, too much to blend in with the system? Yeah. Um, I think that's what we're going to try to implement after the break. So I'm going to get my old positions back um, and get a little bit more freedom because... The weird thing is, is when I watch my demos back, I have a lot of freedom on T side. I can kind of do what I want within what they tell me. I just need to learn what I can, uh, like what works and what doesn't, you know? So the reason why I feel like I have no role again is completely my bad because, like, at the beginning, I wasn't focusing in practice or anything. I just thought I could just put my feet up and kill everyone, and that isn't the case. Um, but I think over Christmas, some stuff's going to change. Um, and I should be killing people again, I think. Like I said, if I'm not killing people, then I just quit and it's fine. I go play what is, and it's... What is the actual change? Can you tell us? I like positions. Okay, yeah. I think I'm getting all my old positions back. Um, Aeon Overpass. Aeon does two. My girlfriend's so cute, man. She's just staring at me. Um, yeah. <laughs> just all that stuff. Yeah, That's great. I'm That's looking great. forward to it. Um, there's, uh, there's one guy who wants to ask if you were ever kicked out of a LAN arena for screaming too loud. 
I ever been kicked out of a... No, but I once had a guy... Oh my god, this story is so funny. So imagine I'm sat here, okay? Like, I'm just playing, like, I'm just... Let's fucking go! Whoa! I'm just screaming, and some little small-ass guy comes over. He's just like... <laughs> he's like... Like, I'm facing this way, okay? And he comes over, and he goes... Can you stop screaming so loud? He was, like, this small. He was super small. And I just turn, and I'm just like... What's your fucking problem, dude? Like, what game are you here to play? It's like, I'm playing Rock Band Hero. Can you stop being so loud? I was like, shut the <laughs> fuck up and get out of my face, you fucking piece of shit. And, like, my teammate stood up and was like, dude, I'll kick the fuck out of you if you touch my teammate again. It was so funny. And then he just went away, and then, then I started screaming even louder. So I guess I haven't been, like, kicked out, but I've been told off by a bunch of people before. <laughs> he was so small. Like, I was the same height as him when I was sat down, and I turned, and I was like... I thought he was on his knees. I'm like, what the fuck? Get the fuck away from me. And, my, and then my teammate was called Rezu. He just stood up and he's like six foot five. And he's like, look at her. Like, you fucking bitch. Get out of my teammate's face. I was like, oh shit. We had to pause the game. And everyone's like, what's going on? What's going on? I'm like, dude, the midget's trying to attack me, man. So yeah, that's a true story too. <laughs> happened to like Insomnia 59. It's pretty funny. This must have been a while ago, I think, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was super funny. It was on Dust 2. I remember the game too. We were playing against Kaz. Super funny. <laughs> um... Uh, which team did, did you dream to join when you started playing like semi-pro or at least when you knew I guess this is my thing. yeah like when when you started realizing that you were getting good like were, was there any team that that you had your hopes up for nah, that would be all. like the dream I, I wasn't planning on going pro dude I nearly retired before I joined big I, I would have yeah. quit I had my new season, um year of college ready to start and I would would have sold my PC and quit completely <laughs> like uh, or maybe I would have kept my laptop to play World of Warcraft but other than that I would have quit like straight away. So I never really, even when I was in Epsilon, I wasn't eight, like, I guess I was kind of aiming to go pro, but I just enjoyed the game, you know? So it's not a sense of, oh, I want to join this team. Like, I want this. I was literally just playing because I was having fun. I would come on, I would play like three practices a night, wouldn't even think about the game, and then I would play an official, I would destroy people and go to sleep. That was like my life. There was nothing else to it. So I, I honestly don't think I've ever had a team like to wish of joining, even now. Like, I'm just happy where I am. I had mm. offers, and I turned them down, like, during the major, so... Really? I, yeah. I, tell us, I, tell I, us more about that. Of course not. <laughs> Get away from me. Uh. But yeah, like, I'm, I'm insanely happy where I am at big. And and I know full well if I put the time in, and we all put the time in, then we could be top five team. Yeah. And even before I joined big, I did a... I remember doing a, a hit to TV post, like, I want to be playing in a, at least a top 20 team. Remember, yeah. And everyone was like, this guy's such an idiot. He's so bad. Look how ugly he is. Yellow teeth. This guy's so fat. And I was like, what the fuck, man? I'm talking about CS, you p fucking bastards. And they're like, yeah, you'll never be in a top 20 team. You're so shit. And like, now we're top 10. Uh, but you, you, know? you can't you can't really expect them not to take those parts why of your why character into, into like uh, whatever you'd say, right? Because oh, I thought you a... meant the... Oh, yeah, being, being called fat. Look, I don't care. <laughs> like, that happens a yeah. lot, right? I mean, I'm pretty fat and I'm quite ugly, so it's whatever. But that was my point. I mean, it could isn't it like corrupting the kind of player you could be in people's eyes? You, you, you get what I'm saying? Like the oh no, I'm I'm the, fat and ugly, man. There's nothing I can do. But... <laughs> <laughs> like what the fuck? Guardian's right. like not exactly thin, right? And he's still insane. So and Nico was fat too, but he's lost weight. So yeah. I don't know what to say about all this artist. <laughs> um, this one I really liked, uh, and this was one I want to ask a bunch of players, actually. Have you ever met a pro that you had completely wrong, that you figured out completely wrong for better or worse? Someone you've met? Uh, yeah, of course. There's been pros who I've... Simple's one. I was still convinced, until I met that guy, that he was just a huge fake persona, and he was a huge piece of shit. And I met him, and he was actually a nice guy. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I remember uh, drinking with him. He was he he was smashed out of his mind, and he just pulled me aside. He's like, "Smuya, I really like you, man." And like then like pushed me away a bit. And like when he realized it, no one could hear us again, he was like, "Fucking bitch, Smuya, fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, he actually took me to the side. I was like, "Dude, I actually like you quite a lot." So ignore what I say, and then like started flowing me again. So simple's one of them. Um, I guess most of like the top top pros, the Astralis guys were definite like Zipex, Dupree. I, I really, really like uh, Zipex. Wow, I nearly called him Andreas, dude. That's so weird. I, I've never <laughs> called him Andreas before in my life. <laughs> Zipex is one of the nicest pros ever, and he looks kind of, like, bad all the time, if you ask me. Like, he kind of looks angry. He, he, looks like, he looks like somebody who knows something that you don't basically all yeah, the yeah, time. That's, yeah, so, yeah. that's pretty much what, like, I mean, the vibe that I have for him. 
He does know something. That, uh, he obviously does. does. I mean, he <laughs> obviously does, but he, uh, he actually looks that way. Yeah, as well. he just looks mad all the time. So, and then I remember meeting him, at, um, the major, and we were playing some FPLs, and he actually like said, "Yo, you should come to the Astralis pack room and shit," and like introduced me to Dupree and like let me play in his setup and shit. I was like, "Holy, f- what the fuck?" He's like offering me chocolate cake and shit. I'm like, "What the fuck? This guy's insane." <laughs> He's like the best player in the like best team in the world, you know. He's like super nice. So. Yeah, and then there's some pros who are just fucking piece of shits as well, who would never admit it. But we won't get into those. I figured you wouldn't name any names here. Yeah, Smee is one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, making this kind of goes along with that, and this will be, I guess, the last one of the I picked up. Um, the ones I picked up. Making the transition to go full time pro. Who has given you the most valuable piece of advice, and what was it? You can think of that other one. Like- when I turn pro or to oh, well, turn pro? Could be, I, I think this could be anywhere in your career. You know, what is the best kind of advice you got from someone in the scene? Who was it? Hmm. I don't know. I've been given a lot of advice by a lot of people. <laughs> Have you taken it ever? Yeah, of course. Every time. So before I was pro, Kiyoshima, around... Let me check my, my clock. Oh, my, my, my map. Not map calendar. So around <laughs> <No>. the, <laughs> around it was May, five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, around May of 2016 or April, February, like the beginning of 2016, I was still just playing ESCA pugs and I was destroying kids. And I ran into Kiyoshima, uh, who lived really close to me, who was staying in Huddersfield for his girlfriend. Um, and I remember actually like. I stuck my dick so far in his ass in that game, you have no idea. I dropped like 50 kills against him. It was insane. In like 28 rounds, it was crazy. And he messaged me like, bro, we have to play some more games. So we played some more games. And after like five games, he said, dude, if you're not cheating, you could be a really good pro. And like that stuck with me for a long time. He's like, just make sure you don't get an ego. That definitely didn't work. And he's like, um, just keep at your grind and do whatever you're doing. And like, don't stop, you know? And five months later, I was in Epsilon or something like that. So I guess that was one advice. And then another advice was Sonny from our spots. Um, he just said, please stop being as much as a retard on Twitter. Like you're a really talented player. Just try to be remembered for what you do in the server and not out the server. And that stuck with me too. So, yeah. Hmm. And was this before or after the incident at, in Kiev? It was at Kiev after the after party. He was wobbling. He was so drunk, but I think he was being serious. Hmm. Yeah. So you got you you're on on good terms with those guys then the other German organization um, or at least no you know what I'll say it outright yeah in Kiev Oscar didn't shake my hand don't know why but in Chicago when he beat us he shook my hand so something obviously changed don't know what I sh- I tried to shake his hand either way um I'm S- Sticker is a super cool guy I really like Sticker we I, I say we're friends oh we just know each other Chris J <laughs> that's uh. Very obvious. Doomhammer. That's what I'm going to say to that. Mm. Uh, who else is on the team? Sonny. I think we're okay. Um, and then, who else is on the team? Oscar. Like, that guy can, whatever. I don't know what his problem is. So, I'm friends with, like, 50% of the team. Kind of. All right. All right. Um, let's move on to one of the bigger pieces of news uh, that came out. This uh, I was I was at home playing playing PlayStation with this one. When this one landed. I was like, yeah, here it comes. Okay, here it comes. Because there is a while till the major yet, or the minor at least, and stuff could you know at least yeah. for the teams that they don't have to go through the qualifiers and the minors. You know the details with when the rosters get locked. I got told it was on like the first of January. Is that true? There's like, well, there's like a bunch of roster locks for different yeah things. I don't, I don't remember the days though. I don't know about that. Okay. And there's also, I mean, the rules are a little bit iffy anyway. Like, Fraxus today we're playing with Lama and Glaze, and the the rule is actually that they have to convince ESL that it's a permanent move. And no, like, only if only if like uh, those two players right? played with some other other team at the same qualifier. I think. Okay, so it has to be in the same. Yeah, I think it was has it has to be like the same yeah. qualifier. Those, anyway. Yeah, like you said, it's like it's a fairly confusing rule set right now. Yeah. Just because, like, but at the same time, it kind of works better than it used to, just because there are is, is a little bit more freedom. Like, you can actually join another team even if you played some other like previous. Uh, uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Part so of the, part this of the whole cycle. roster change, I'm not too sure with like, um, like I don't know how to take it because I don't know the roster lock rules, you know? Because maybe some team think they get like a good change and they don't like they get fucked so i'd have to see the rust lock thing first 
Because hmm. I know some stuff, of course, and I'm not sure if it's even allowed to work because I don't know if they're locked to rosters or anything. So let's talk about the big one now, the reported one at least that came out last night about the liquid and MIPR. Um, yeah, Susan I don't Taco. even know if that's true. Okay. I mean, you I would... don't know anything at all, but like it would have already been announced. Um, oh yeah. I, I, I mean... think Stu's happy in MIPR. I'm not too sure. I saw him. Like, the question uh, is whether it was even his call. Like, and maybe it was just like the team coming to him saying, "Like, hey, yeah, we tried this; it didn't really work. Uh, we're gonna go back to a Brazilian Brazilian roster. So, do you want to go to Liquid?" And that's pretty much what I think the the case was. I uh, um, I'm that's that that's my take on it anyway. This could be because, any like link in the chain that set the whole thing in. Yeah, I mean, but but it's obviously coming from the team rather than him himself. But like even himself, I I think. Is probably realizing that that's just like it's been way too long that it hasn't worked for him specifically as well because he has been looking out for basically the entire time that uh, that he's been in MIBR, especially compared to his time in Cloud9, where he was like basically their best player, at least the second best player, and he second was off, obviously was had a lot better? more freedom. I'm sorry. Who do you think was better than Stewie? I mean, Automatic was I think a little bit more stable. Hmm. Yeah, it's fair to say. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's why I said that's why I said perhaps second is because automatic was kind of just He's generally like a lot more consistent. Guy. Yeah. But what yeah, it's guys... just compared to for, compared to his cloud um, time in cloud nine, I feel like Stewie is not pro- is probably not feeling very good about his own performances over the last couple. Oh, come of on, months. man! He made the Forbes thirty under thirty list. <laughs> it's gotta come for something, right? Yeah. No, I mean, but who do you think, like, if this, if this is set in stone or if, if it was, uh, who do you think, like, because I, I definitely feel like the the move for the Brazilians to move to uh, to MIBR looks like, like the better deal. Um, Why? Like, just because getting that old squad together and having, like, a capacity in, like, Zeus, the, the what he seems to have been doing in Liquid, and if he can, like, replicate that, I think, with his old... Mates, it looks very good. I mean, I'm not sure that just bringing back Stewie would really help anything. Plus, we don't know who's going to be coaching Liquid. Wait, what right? would the lineup be? Echo, Colt, um, Fallen, Fair, and basically uh, unannounced. And TBA, yeah. Yeah. Oh, but, I mean, okay. they Reportedly, they're thinking about KNG and um, what's oh, the okay. other guy's name? Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce so, it. The, them getting Taco means nothing. Um, that That isn't a win. Like, That's a reset button, basically. Like we've yeah, been talking yeah. about this when we were talking about Moss Sports as well, getting Sticko back. This is kind of the same thing. I don't thing, think I it's even like. a reset because I think unless like the problem they had in the beginning and why it stopped working is because Taco got mad being the bitch of the team. Like he was literally, you get given a Mac Ten, you go first die, called zero baits, everybody wins a one v four every round. That was the strat. It would fall in, would kill free. Fur would push through a smoke, and if he didn't kill anyone, then called zero would clutch. Okay. And Taco left, and he proved that he could not play the bitch role and still be in a really successful team, and he outranked them the entire year, right? He he was like number two or three in Liquid, and MIBR was always like six or five. So the problem they're going to have is Taco's going to want his roles um, again, and then that's going to have the same issue as it had with having Phelps or having Stewie, because unless Taco agrees to be the player again, maybe he does, I don't, I don't know. I don't think he would, though, because I think he was good at his, jo- his role, you know? And well, I mean, at the same time, he hasn't really changed in Liquid. I feel like his roles yeah, have been very no, similar. No, 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 no. Try play against him. Holy guacamole, it's way different. He can aim now. In MIBI, he never was put in positions where he could aim or like outplay you. Because T-side, he would run in first and die. And then on CT, he would play like every anchor bomb site where you know he's there and you just go and he like maybe gets one kill or, or he dies. Whereas on Liquid, he was like getting like 30 bombs and stuff quite a lot. You know, he was like one of their best players. So I, I don't think it will work. And depending on their fifth, if they can get KNG, he looked fucking insane at EPL. Like, he was really good to play against. He was, like, really hard to play against, too. Um, and I don't know who else they could even get. Because I mean, FNX K- just is definitely LG, like... right? I'm sorry? Did FNX just join LG again? Is that, is that confirmed? FNX? No, no, no you're, no, you're, you're talking about bolts. <laughs> oh, bolts? Okay. Getting confused. I yeah, leaks, yeah. Bolts, I might leak, I might leak something there. Basically, <laughs> Luminosity has become... Like eighty percent of the old uh, immortals yeah, yeah, with yeah, the yeah, codes, even like codes. more than that. Yeah. So it's basically okay. kind of also like a reset button in that, yeah, so, in that case. So I just think it isn't even a reset because I mean it is a reset, but they're just gonna start arguing again unless Taco can put all his differences aside because I think that's why everything kicked off in the first place because he wasn't happy. And for Liquid, it's insane that they got Stewie. Um, 
if they let Stewie play his positions again, then he's going to be insane. Because he, he, he won a major, right? And he was like one of the best players at the major. Um, yeah. I think the... The, it'll, with Liquid, I think it will come down a lot to confidence, first of all. Just because yeah, of what I was saying about Stewie. That, though, with I'm Stewie? Sorry? They won't have a problem with that. Like People keep on saying this thing about Zeus being um, like their biggest piece of success, and I don't know how true that is. I spoke to Twist, and he said he really likes him a lot and says he does a lot for the team, but like it's hard to say if they'll be bad without Zeus, you know, or good without him. So I think oh, yeah. I think Liquid are way better like than uh, out of the two. Uh, I think they're a lot better. Or they'll be a lot stronger. Hmm. What do you guys think role-wise will happen in that team? With them coming it's in? Gonna be, uh, I think it's going to be a little bit hard. But I mean, Stewie, Talco was used to doing yeah. like a little bit of a lurker, at least on maps like Overpass. <laughs> so I think that's that that's like a role that, that fits Stewie. Like Stewie likes to have quite a lot of freedom on T-side. So, uh, Stewie will play his roles. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Like, do you really think that like when you have Nav twists and Elise, do you really feel like Stewie will get everything that he wants? Yeah, because I'm Elige, not so sure about that. Elise is so good that he can play any position and have 1.1 rating. So, I mean, I agree with that, but I'm not sure if he does. No, like, no, no, I'm he not does sure 100%. He, he's going to be that comfortable with it. But he did it when they had Simple in the team. And the reason Simple got kicked was because of Elise. He said he was sick and tired of playing a shit role, but he was still yeah. really good when he played in a shit role. So he's clearly willing to like lose some of his star power if he's bringing in Stewie, because Stewie isn't going to fucking running first for you and be your IGL, you know what I mean? <laughs> like Stewie's a guy where he can get 25, 20 kills a game, most of the times 25, quite often 30, if you let him do what he wants, because he's a really good player. But I think... Wait, someone just wrote in chat one question. If I will donate to Hitch on TV, will Stewie yeah, sign my profile? <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I think... Um, He'll get his positions. And same with Naf, dude. I've been watching that guy's demos. Yeah. He looks like the stupidest player ever, but he doesn't miss. Like, when I watch him, he doesn't look like him. Like, I love Naf, by the way, before me and Keith go way back, okay? But, um, it's just, like, he honestly doesn't know what he's doing. He looks like a noob with Wallhack and Aimbot. <laughs> like, actually, when I watch his demos. And he's going, like, 25 to 5 every game. So that guy can play in any position he wants and still get. 20 kills, you know. So I remember I think... he he picked out the uh, he picked up the orb out of frustration and uh, what was that? Killed next everyone. Turn? Yeah. On Inferno, right? In the final, yeah. was it? Wait, who or was, was it? Semi? Oh, that was, was in Malta. No, that was against NRG, right? No, 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 no. no. That was this. way before. I just I can't remember. It was like a semi, obviously. <laughs> I think easiest or something. I remember. Yeah. No, that was even before, like a couple of months back. I don't remember. I don't remember, but yeah. He's, yeah, I, uh, I, think, I, I think agree with that. Talk. I think Naf would would do well in in different um, positions, but that's that's a lot of changes to to accommodate just one player, you know. Especially like when what Liquid have been running so far has been working pretty well. Obviously, they haven't been winning, but generally they've been one of the most stable teams in the last couple of months at least. So uh, they've been really basically good, the, the second most stable team outside of yeah, Australia, basically. They've, they've been really hard to play against too. Like, really hard. Holy hell. They've changed a lot. Like, they've improved so much in the last three months, two months. It's crazy. Which yeah. begs the question why they would make a change. Like, unless it's, like, something personal or the Brazilians want to go home for this or other reason. Um, or someone in I maybe are kind of kickstarting the chain reaction. It's Barring all that, it's just the, this making change in, in itself doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Ooh, someone yeah, just said well, something kind of true. He said Liquid's never had a designated AWP, so that could uh, yeah. end up fitting Stewie. That's very true, actually. Because Stewie loves to AWP. Holy hell. Imagine yeah. Stewie main AWP in Liquid? Stewie Holy was, shit. Stewie was always I'm more like a secondary, though. Yeah, yeah they're I mean, fucking insane with that weapon. He was, he is very clips? good, yeah. Holy shit. It would also free up Nitro more, you know, um, I guess being the IGL and Maybe coming up with more shit for them to do, taking yeah, more passive roles. open though, because it's such an easy weapon, man. Holy sh like, some of the people I die to in games, it like annoys me, because I watched the game back and they like didn't even mean to kill me, you know? They just left click and I die. It's so stupid. So, I mean, Nitro is fine with that weapon. It's it's so like noob prone. I'm not calling Nitro a noob, by the way. I'm just saying it's an easy weapon to use when you're IGLing because you don't have to think that much. You can set up a strat where you just hold an angle and you just have to left-click, you know? And, like, everyone else knows what they're doing, so... 
Yeah, I think he'd still use it. I think Stu would just be the secondary there. Could be. Oh, could Naf, yeah, they have been, they've been running that too. way. And I, feel, I feel like it's it's been working pretty well, and they just like they can just be dynamic as they as they have been so far with they, like double hopping. They had the same problem or a situation in MIBR if it is KNG who's coming in, who's also very op heavy, right? I mean, yeah, that was your really op heavy. Like they'll they'll also have at least two or three, four, maybe even who can actually op. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean anybody, well. anybody out of that team, even Taco, Taco has been secondary yeah, hopping for mm -hmm. even when he, when he was back in in SK, he was secondary hopping a lot of the time over Cold Sierra. So like the, the, anybody from that team can pick up an op if that happens. Like literally anybody, any of the five. I'm I'm anxious to see about KNG. By the way, if if the apology he came out with like was it a week ago? If that has ties to this, because it was so. It yeah, seems like it, it would make sense, right? I think it. I mean, I'm. I didn't believe it at the at the start, but like, it feels like it just makes more and more sense with every day. Basically, it's just the timing is a little bit too too suspicious for for this not to be some PR move just to see basically if, if people have kind of forgiven KNG or not. That's that's what it feels like to me. Yeah, it feels like he's a really nice guy, though. Have you have you guys spoke to him at events or anything? I haven't. He doesn't really speak English, does he? Not too yeah, much. Anyway, his English is fine. Is he? Like, yeah, I remember when I was uh, there, he I tweeted like I needed some death matches, and it uh, and he was like helping me out and saying if I ever have any problems with anything, like just come to him straight away and he'll fix everything and stuff. And I was like a guy he didn't even know. You know what I mean? Like when I was in uh, Chicago, and he was always like, if I saw him at an event, he always comes up and like asks how I am and stuff. And I mean, an asshole wouldn't do that. That's just how it is. Regardless of what he said in the past, and I think I don't. It I, depends on your temper, doesn't it? Like if I mean, yeah, he might be he like he might be like that until you cross him, you know? Yeah, but I I think he's definitely changed, and he's mm. I don't know. He seems super legit to me anyway. I really like Kenji a lot, so yeah, I'd believe him. Gonna be different. Yeah, I just wonder. I just wonder if it's well, it's basically immortals who are um, MRBR, so. Um, uh, it'd be interesting to see if the organization would be able to forgive him. Let's say it hasn't been all that long since uh, since he fucked up with Immortals. Was it? So was it a year? Uh, a little bit over a year. But was yeah. he in Immortals? Oh yeah, he was right. Well, they, yeah, they that's, yeah, that's major, what No yeah. Winston said. No Winston said he's never gonna. He w won't be a part of Immortals, and he never will again. So that's crazy. yeah, something along those lines. But, but this anyway, is MIBR, but so the the fuck up around <laughs> what was it, Mortria? <laughs> Ah, it's the same thing, yeah. <laughs> I know, but imagine that's like the route he takes. Yeah, this is Emolus. <laughs> you can join this team. <laughs> no, I mean, if that if that happens, he's just gonna say some, something along the lines of like he believes that he's changed and he's yeah, done better. He's he's taking a look at his actions. And, and you know, shit. for people crying out that that would be very hypocr hypocr hypocritical, I don't even know. I mean, like it's it's possible that people change themselves. And a year is a long time, man. And also, just don't be yes. fooled by what what actually goes on like in upper management of these teams like you want the best you want to feel the best team and if you know if it fits then it fits if, if you have to do like an asshole then it's fine <laughs> <laughs> no i just mean if he has I mean... changed and it's your best possibility i mean having like a statement from a year ago bar yourself from hiring the guy i think would be very stupid you know that's what yeah. i mean like regardless of what people think if they think you're stupid for hiring him again like who cares right yeah. if you need him then you need him and yeah. he's super sick so yeah. yeah, can be definitely. Oh. I can see, I can see the advantages for sure. Like he's an X factor that MIBR could need. Yeah. But yeah, it, does, like a, it all comes really with player. it all comes with like how much, like from the double op basically. Because I don't see, I don't see Fallen giving up an op to to KNG in almost any any scenario. I don't think that's going to happen. So how much is he going to be comfortable with? I mean, he's done it alongside Henny for a long time now. So. I guess he's used to it, but even then he's been very up heavy. So um, is it MIBR just going to transition to almost like a full time double up on CG side, and then, then just like do it sometimes on T side as well? Like I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not not too sure. Yeah. Interesting, definitely. Let's move uh, along to the next topic, which is uh, the APL finals. Obviously, you guys went out a little early there, um, Smuya. Uh, yeah. And and I guess you saw from home how Astralis took home the. The Grand Slam. Uh, what do you think about that achievement, by the way? I mean, because talking about their domination has become kind of tiring, but just the fact that they took it all this way. It's it's like so underappreciated what they've done this year. If you think about the level of competition they have to play against, like 
Nico now would single-handedly beat the Fnatic that destroyed everyone, you know? Like, he's that good. Like, obviously, all of Mice was really good, but I think the, the, the level of the game is at now. For example, just... I, I'm playing ECA pugs, and people know how to smoke window on Mirage and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how... That's the sort of level I'm talking about here. Everyone knows how to play CS at, like, a level that no one used to back then. And Astralis are so far ahead of that level, it's fucking crazy. They're playing, like, 2020 CS, like, actually. Until people realize how they, they're so good, they're one or two years ahead of everyone. So, for them to have won EPL, ECS, and a major in the same year, uh, they won, like, 8 out of 11 events, right? Or something like that? 9, nine out of 13. I know, that's so fucking crazy, what put, it, what put it in perspective for me was that I was talking to Dupree afterwards doing an interview for, for Denny's sub site we have, that's 2DK, and he was like, no one, none of us really thought about winning EPL finals. Like, that wasn't even a thing. We all, the, the, the event we were playing was the IGS, was the Grand Slam event. Like, imagine being at a spot where you can, you know, kind of say, yeah, well, we, we also won the last EPL finals and back-to-back ECS champions. And so, so and you go so far as to even, like, drop the actual event that you're playing. Like, it doesn't even matter to you. It's only about the million, not the money itself, but, like, that yeah, achievement. Of course it's about the million, dude. Oh, <laughs> That's a no, lot of money, man. Yeah, and I, he was kind of, he was also very open about that. Like, I don't think he was, like, trying to... He did obviously say the, uh, the like, the obligatory, uh, it's not about the money, but, but at the same time, the money itself is just such a huge story that it's also good for them. It's not just the yeah, money 100%. in and of itself. Like, it's the PR that comes with actually being able to sell this team that won a million bucks for playing Counter-Strike, you know? Yeah. To be fair, like, it's not even half of what they what they yeah. earned for, for the entire year. Three and a half million for 2018 is fucking crazy. That's what they earned overall? Yeah, in 2018. Wait, let me do some... Three and a half numbers. million. That's I'm crazy. Gonna, I'm going to figure out how much player earned themselves, just from prize money, wait. Three, what five. What do you mean? Because I know some stuff you guys don't. One second. I mean, you, uh, you mean like their cut or something? Yeah. Oh my god, that's so much money. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's oh going to be, it's gonna be like gosh. half a million. It's going to be like half a million plus per player. So. Yeah, it is. Oh so my that's God. what I'm saying. Uh, that would not be bad in my bank account. No, I mean, that's, I that's like, that. you also have to take into consideration taxes in Denmark, which are fucking crazy as well. Okay, but yeah. still, but still it's, a lot of, it's a lot of fucking money. Yeah, it, it's not, it's actually not that, it's not the same as income tax, you know. So I don't know the exact rules, but, and then there's also ways to like, put it at certain places where it won't be taxed as much. But you know? yeah, but when the, the second you take it out, you're going to have to tax it. So it's basically, yeah, it's, it's basically useless up to that point. Yeah. So that's, I mean, just generally. But still, it's a lot of fucking money. Like that's, yeah. that's just... And they own their org, so they take their, like, they're paying themselves. <laughs> so they get like even more money, you know? Cause that's kind of minuscule though. It's like... I mean, ah, a mini yeah, school of 3.5 million is a lot of fucking money, dude. <laughs> 1% is like, what, 35k or some shit. Like, it's a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, I don't think any of them would say that it doesn't mean anything to them, or at least it's nah. clear if they do that it's yeah. It's just know? it's crazy though what they've achieved and how they've done it as well. Coming from having they were like uh, tiptoeing behind Fnatic right when they were on the top, and then they finally learned to beat Fnatic, and then they lost something or they kicked Carrigan, I think. I can't. I can't remember. I didn't really. They play lost the glaive. They lost the glaive at the Danish LAN. Yeah, but actually. what what LAN was that? And what team was Glaive playing for? Heroic. He was playing for Heroic. Uh, really? Yeah. And it was yeah, like yeah. power LAN, like a minor power LAN. LAN. It's like a hundred k LAN. Power Denmark, LAN was, right? was, no, it was not even that. It was just a local LAN in, in yeah, yeah. Denmark. Like it wasn't 26K, even an international. Yeah. They went there to actually win. They went there just to pick up, I think, their confidence or something. Because yeah, that, that was rock bottom. Yeah. And then they, that's and then they come back and. After everything being so low and, you know what I mean? Like, it, I mean, it gave, even it, that took them a while though. Like, that's well. Yeah, I guess so. But fuck me, dude. I, I'm just saying, it's the most impressive achievement. Like what they've done in 2018, compared to anyone in CS by far. It beats any individual accolade. Like each one of those players will be remembered till CS dies, and that's more important than simple having the highest rating. You know, like, who gives? Like, yeah, it's cool, but. You haven't won that much money, and you don't play that good CS. So, to me, yeah. it's the most impressive by far. 
You know what? I think I think it's not that hard to see why Astros have been so good. Like everybody can see everything that they're Leif. doing better than everybody else. Hmm. Well, but, the but only I mean, reason. my point is like nobody can replicate it. That's the problem. Like everybody knows why they're good, but nobody can counter it. Nobody can replicate it. Nobody can get to that level at this point. So yeah. the question I mean, do is like, do you know when... why they're so good? Well, the shitloads of small things, basically. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> all it is. Like a million of small things. They they're good at everything that people are bad at. There's people who are better than them at some stuff, like early round, but no one can play a 3v3 like Astralis. That's the most important thing in the game. But they, they just do everything so consistently well. Even like yeah, it's, it's all about the consistency crazy, as well. They just do it every single round. It doesn't even matter. Like that's the thing. Like they yeah. do everything better and all the time as well. It's not like they they very rarely like actually fuck up. It's because they just they've done the smart thing. They've just sat down on a server and they've just talked. Like they spoke about everything. They don't, you yeah. know, they actually do it outside of the server. I talked to the sports psychologist, who's like a former ranger. He's like a proper, like elite forces type dude, who was also a psychologist. And he said that what they do is they boot camp without PCs. So they'll go to like this workshop. They'll work for two, three days, just have the piece of paper there and talk about it. Like they won't, they they'll actively step away from the PCs to do all the work that's required to do well inside, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, it's but then again, crazy. What the fuck? Yeah, they'll it's they'll boot. I was like, I'm gonna print out a picture of those two, and I'm gonna do that by myself. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> See you in Australia next year. I'm just, I, yeah, I'm just curious about like when people are gonna come, like catch up to that level of commitment to the to the game. Yeah, basically. that's all it is. It's just. And commitment. the funny, like what I was also talking about yesterday when talking about the roster changes that apparently that obviously are made to, at least in some way, or at least part of it is trying to take down Australis because. They figured that we have to change something. Is that Australians are making their like their plan and their system readily available? It's not hard to do what they do. I mean, it's, it's hard to play hard. like they do. It's hard it's to play like they hard. do, and it's hard to replicate the whole system. But each and everything is actually available. It's it's not like they're very being very secretive secretive about what it is they do outside the server. And you see a lot of teams talking about it anyway. You know. We had Depp saying in an interview with us that I want to do what they do. I want more people. I want the psychologists. I, I, I need more staff. And it's like it's very clear what it is, at least what you can do to try and get there. But it doesn't seem like any of them, any other teams are like taking it that seriously. I know some teams and Liquid also had a sports psychologist, but it doesn't seem to be like it the same taking it seriously as they do it on Astralis. Yeah, they don't really have the budget either. Astralis have a lot of money. I mean, some like FaZe definitely do, for example, but yeah. the lower down teams will never catch anyone like Ashalas because they don't have the money to f like fund that sort of stuff. Like, pay for a sports psychologist, first of all, his time, and to follow you around the world is like, <laughs> costs quite a lot of money. Yeah, I think it's going to also, like you were mentioning, you mentioned FaZe, and I think that's a very good example of a team that will probably, probably take a very, very long time, like all of its individuals, to, to realize that this is the way to play CS. And I think that's going to be very hard for them to to kind of uh, overcome because I, I don't they think know. they. I'm sorry. I said I think they know they're just lazy like the rest of us. Maybe if, I mean I'm not sure if it's been lazy. I'm I can not tell sure you. necessarily about laziness. It's just about the freedom that they have and giving that up. I think that's the that's the biggest uh, hurdle to to overcome from an individual's point of point of view. I'm sure that's something you also had to. I mean, you were talking about it yourself. How you had to overcome like having your own ego and your own roles and yeah. and and coming back from that and adapting to a new style with with big which is somewhat similar to astralis at least in some ways so so that's the that's the thing that people have to overcome and it's not an easy thing to overcome buckle down do the work right yeah um so it's before... just like you have to take a look at cs in a whole other angle like you can't really yeah um think for yourself almost at all that's the that's the problem become one with the team yeah. Um, so, so Smoothie, before you, I know you have to go before too long. I wanted yep. to, wanted to uh, to have you just on for the last topic before we start talking about this weekend's events. Um, obviously, like get, getting buried in the million dollar prize and the huge master, roster moves. That was the whole. That was the big update that came out, at least until uh, at least since after since the last show we did, which was um, the BR the Battle Royale uh, update, along with the I think even huger free to play movement that they made. Um, I was I was by I was on my bike the way over here and I saw this young kid like 10 11 years old in his room he had a big station like a big rig up and I was so happy to see that his um, his his loads he was on the CS loading screen and usually when you see that it's like it's going to be Fortnite or Minecraft or whatever 
And I was so happy to see that he was actually, it was the CSGO loading scene. And of course, when, once I was, when I was like cycling by, he obviously loaded into the Battle Royale mode, which I think. How long like, did you spend looking in this kid's window? No, I was, I was at an intersection and he was like. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay. Just I was t- just staring in past little kids. kids' windows to see what they're playing. I was fucked up, man. <laughs> I don't even care about this game. You, you want to come play this game with me? Uh, nah, it, I mean, I guess that's cool for this 11 year olds playing it, but I think the free to play is insane, right? Because so many people will start playing that. Hasn't it got. Wait, how do you check player base on Steam? It had like 900k or something at one point. Yeah, it was uh, almost getting there, yeah. Which is fucking the highest it's been in two years, so it's clearly done something good for the game, and I think long term it will help a lot too. Because over time, all that's going to happen is more people are going to come play. Um, the Battle Royale mod, I don't really care for it. I guess it brings some of the traction away from Fortnite and PUBG. It brings some sort of like, hey guys, look at us. We have something like this too. Like, come try ours. And it's free, so you can come play. Um... I, I don't really care for the danger zone stuff, but the free to play is really cool. Did you play it yet? Did you try it? I won five out of five games, and everyone's really bad. So, <laughs> and it's sixty four <laughs> tick. So I, I just no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're you're talking about like, of course, like danger zone on its own is not really going to do anything from the from directly for the competitive side, but just like it's it's all about like trickle down stuff where. Like you said, we're gonna get a lot of a lot of people from over from from some other games, and those people will just take to CS as it is, like for what we know it for, um, for it being a five v five, a competitive game, and just people are gonna discover it that way instead of how they've been doing it thus far, just because it's a uh, this is a mode that that has obviously been very very popular in the last year or something. So that's yeah. that's how that's how we're gonna benefit from it um, in the end. Some of those people will just start. Um, getting into the competitive side and watching the tournaments and stuff like that. Yeah, and also like that they kept the mechanics because that is what CSGO is so great yeah, yeah. for, the gunplay. So hopefully there's some carryover, even though that's, I think... That's exactly it. I think if you're coming in from a BR mode and then changing to like going the matchmaking, I feel like you're going to have a hard time. <laughs> well, know? of course, but I mean, the, <laughs> you're still, you're, you're going to get into the game and you're going to like it for something, right? So that's yeah, my point. I mean, it's the same reason as... Any of us guys, I think there's plenty of people who love CS simply for the challenge, right? Because the reason why I enjoyed it so much is when I started playing is I liked the fact that I could be better than this guy with like little tricks and stuff on maps. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you couldn't outmaneuver people, and it's, it's like learning a smoke. It's, and it's, it's yeah, like it's huge. like it's all individually. And there's so many people who play Fortnite and stuff for that reason, and they might fall in love with CS. So, and if it's free to play, let's yeah. say. Even if every hundred people come, five people stay. Like after five thousand people, that's a lot of people staying, you know. And if like a million people try it over a month, and five people of every hundred stay, like that's so many people. So, yep. it's it's very it's super sick actually. And also, just what free to play will mean, like for the Asian scene, I think uh, it's gonna. Dude, be- have you seen what happened with the, the Asian stuff? When they like made it free to play, and then they changed all the skins to or something. I saw someone tweeting about it. They removed like all the skin, uh, skulls from skins, so they can still yeah. sell them. You can't have skulls in China for some yeah, fucking it's, weird reason. Oh. It's like friendly and shit like that, right? All skins in games that that have like a fantasy element are basically fucked <laughs> because like skulls. How are you gonna not have skulls? Um, <laughs> yeah, and then there, there's also there's all sorts of things going on with Steam and Valve in China. Like they released Steam China. Then turn this free to play. Then there's a situation in in Dota where they they the Valve sided, I guess, kind of with the Chinese uh, side of a big argument about some racist players that, for me, were blown, blown out of proportion. All's coming together. Like it's it's kind of clear that they're making this huge, like uh, like invasion or at least uh, going to Asia trying to China trying to number capture. one, dude. Yeah, well, it will, it will be Tyler. It's be. a massive fucking market, man. Like you have yeah. to understand yeah, that. There's right? a couple of people in China. <laughs> I saw some guy tweet out after the Dota thing was, and we don't have to get into the specifics of it, but they, they ended up like saying, well, the Chinese are at least a little bit right about this. Um, and there was there was like this this Chinese dude on Twitter was like, I was going to stop playing Dota forever, but now I'm going to pay $2,000 worth of skins, which basically right there boils down why they actually did this thing, you know. And <laughs> I think it fits pretty well with the free-to-play stuff, and, and hopefully we'll get some teams that aren't Tai Lu to do some damage internationally, right? I mean, long. this is something that we kind of saw coming, I think. Just generally, we've seen them making a part of the game free-to-play, like watching demos and spectating and something. 
Um, I remember ahead of the oh, major, yeah, yeah. a couple of months major, before the major, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's like one of those tells that we had. But even before that, like you could see how from the guy at Valve who is working at the on the cheating side, on the um, <laughs> anti cheat side, I forgot his name. Um, but from what he was, he's been talking about, like we could see that they've been buckling down on on the anti cheat a lot, um, doing a lot of work, which is also obviously why. Or like it's gonna help make the game free to play if if you can improve the anti cheat and that's yeah, be apparently cool. something that's apparently something that they've been working on a lot so that makes sense yeah um that'd I think cool. we're gonna be letting you off the hook now Smoy actually because you nice man time to get those gains baby I want to ask you yeah because he's going at the gym we promised him we'd we'd have him out probably nine thirty <laughs> uh, last before you go this is guy who I think you can maybe help out um for the last question. Plastic Bag One is his name. Fantastic name. Plastic Bag One. Okay. <laughs> Can you ask Smuya what advice he would give a better than average opera on pugs, or at least how to improve? How to improve? Yeah. Like if you're better than average and you kind of realize <sighs> what's the next step, what do you do? You see, like if you asked me this two months ago, the first thing that came to my head just then, I would have said it out loud and I would have got into a lot of trouble. So I won't say that. <laughs> but um, what That's I would recommend pretty... to someone to not get into trouble, I would say. Well, there's two easy ways. One, you can download an aimbot. That helps a lot, but I'd recommend not doing that. <laughs> or two, you could actually just watch pros play, download their demos, see what they do, see how they like to aim angles, see how they react to certain smokes, and just stuff like that. I guess that's the most important. Like Learning the meta is really important too. So the most common smokes. I'd be like, you don't see that stuff in pugs though. So I got really good. I was one of the best puggers in the world, actually. Uh, for rating wise, I, no, I actually wasn't ESC. I was number one for like 12 months in a row. And I used to just get eco frags. Like, they're so important to get good stats. So, I rec if you're playing ESCA, I recommend you to get more eco frags. <laughs> if you're playing Face It, I recommend you to get a team and just learn how to be a team player. That's the I most mean, important watching, watching pros, I think, is by far the biggest thing. Like watching you will learn so much watching, watching pros. pros play, yeah, yeah just and just pro, pro matches. Not even not even just like FPL and stuff, but pro matches, and and seeing how they react to things. I think that's the biggest biggest yeah, way you can improve. Sense. You can learn so much from that. And you learn something every game too. If you're not yeah. that good, then you'll learn something new all the time. So, yeah. Well, yeah. As I said, you can just download an aimbot. That helps too. It worked for me, and then I joined big, and I had to get rid of it. So I just feel like this letting this be your last words will. Do so much good for the show, and we'll take it completely <laughs> out of context and put it on Reddit. Right? The title: Smuya, download an aimbot if you want to be good. <laughs> Smuya, thanks for joining us, man. It's been no great. Worries, it's been fun. Uh, we'll I don't even him... have to stop this shit. You could, you... <laughs> no way. I just stop streaming close. on this OBS stuff. Please do it, because otherwise our producer will uh, do the same thing I did with the kid. He'll stalk you for a while. So please. Oh <laughs> shit! <laughs> Please right, go boys. press. I'm out of this bitch. I'll see you somewhere. Thank see you. Ya. Thank you, everybody. All right. Um, shout out to all my sponsors at Big. I'm doing a little plug because my sponsors are cool. I don't <laughs> have my jersey right now, but Corsair. Yeah, that's all I've got right now. Ciao, boys. I'm just going to listen to heavyweights. Bye. <laughs> see ya. How are we going to ever like, be on top of this now, Striker? How are we going to keep carrying this? Um, yeah, this, this is this is the best way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's no, talk a little yeah. bit about and in context, I guess, because now he was um, he, he was he was already talking a little bit about the end of the year. Um, let's let's dive into. Let's, all right, guys, let's... I'm still here. Goodbye. I love you all. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Um, let's talk a little bit about the. You're going to Lisbon to to the Blast Pro event. Yeah. Let us. Uh, intertwine the preview that we usually do of the next event with um, the money that we're betting because <laughs> this is what we do every week uh we we pull up uh ggbet.com and then we take a look at the funniest best in my case safest bets that we can <laughs> find um so as to play a little with the house money that they have there um i'm i'm anxious to see yours this time we also have uh prof he actually is in abu dhabi <laughs> for the plg but he did a, a, a betting slip for us that we have to al analyze for him um yeah that's so, gonna be a hard one <laughs> so if you want to uh to bring up everything uh let's just dive into it this is this is obviously the group stage matches which there are a lot of so you'll see some of the same matchups but that that are a little bit different um and uh, I don't know. You wanna you wanna head out, striker, and be the first yeah. guy to put out your. If you can bring it up on the screen, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. If I can, <laughs> <laughs> we have no signal, no signal, prof again. He's, he's, in Ab he's on Abu Dhabi. I think he has signal. Yeah, well, I'm not so sure about that. 
Um, okay, my slip. Uh, let's start from the top. Uh, MIBR and IP. Um, we know that MIBR are playing the event for the stand in. Swag is playing instead of fair. So that's already one of the reasons. And NIP have actually been going pretty well up against the MIBR even um, before they had to at least temporarily change the lineup. So that's why I went with NIP. The pretty, actually, pretty high odds for uh, considering what the matchup is and um, considering the uh, the stand-in situation. They also had some time, right? NIP. They, they. I mean, if yeah, they yeah. Want to go out with a bang, then this is. Yeah, they have. have to... They have definitely had time. While it might be, are probably going to come into the event with basically nothing with swag. I feel like they're maybe going to have like maybe one or two days um, practice with them. Also, potential roster moves coming soonish. Yeah, that that could also. That's also another thing that 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 could affect them. I just feel like they're not going to be. They're not going to go into this with the with the full heart and complete hunger that they would in, in two other tournaments because of the standings, because of the potential changes and everything like that. So that could also work for them, but just uh, pressure-wise, that's kind of eliminating any pressure that they have on themselves. But I just feel like an IP have the upper hand in that matchup. Kind of the same reason, well, not the same reason, obviously. Astralis <laughs> are, the, are the best team in the world and they will be favored against any team at any point. But I just picked them against the MIBR and later against Cloud9 as well. I feel like the odds are almost... I see you also have them against Cloud9. They, yeah, they were They're like 1.25, so 1.21, 1.15, yeah. something like that. Not not too not too big. I just used those two matches that I felt like were the most safe. Mm. Normally, MIBR would obviously have a lot better chance against Astralis. But at this, in this case, uh, with everything that I've mentioned, I just feel like Astralis have, have maybe like 90% chance of winning. So, and the same thing goes against Cloud9. They have a refresh, also a stand-in situation. Probably didn't really play that much with him. Um, also because they reside in NA. And they've probably only joined up with refresh here when they've traveled here. Yeah. Which must, must be a couple of days back. So that's uh, that's another thing. Basically the same thing. I just picked Astralis in those two matches. Just because I'm very, very confident. And in those two, um, going the way that I want. And uh, then I like just, the odds like, for the phase yeah. nip game. Yeah, that's that's, that's uh, pretty high. That's pretty that's pretty high to be. Yeah, they were both pretty high. They were, I think, NIP were like two point oh five or some some somewhere along those lines. I was actually thinking about skipping that one completely hmm. because we don't know what kind of phase we're gonna see. Like, I I'm really not sure what um what phase we'll see, but it's the same kind of counts for them. What we what you were saying about NIP and them being ready for this because they haven't they skip. Well, not skip. They just didn't qualify didn't go, for yeah. for APL, so they're they're just gonna have a little bit more time than than the other teams. Not necessarily against an IP because they've been in the same situation basically, but they just have had a, a, quite a lot of time. They might be hungry. This is the last tournament of the year, so I just generally just you you think they are favorites in that matchup, so that's why I picked them. And I the actually forgot that they weren't going to EPL. I was asking Kerrigan to come on the show, and he was like. And I was like, uh, oh, did you already go to Owens for the last show last week? And he was like, I'm not going. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Sorry about that, Finn. I'm sorry. Um, so moving into my slip, I think uh, let's do his at the end. <laughs> yeah. Just because he's, he's now at the far end. Um, we can make fun of him. I basically bet against Cloud9 every game. Um, Holy shit. And no, no disrespect to my my boy Refresh, who we had on the show also, but I just feel like they won't... I don't think they'll win any, any of their games. I mean, potentially the game versus MIBR could be a little close for the reasons you mentioned. I definitely think they won't beat Cloud9, uh, and I like the odds at almost 1-5. So, uh, and also because if I win this, I just precisely go above the thousand euro dollar pool that we had at the end. <laughs> and I feel like we should probably close out this uh, game or at least reset at the year's end. And I really want us to just make a little bit of money. <laughs> so, uh, but then, uh, then again, you could have argued that I should have went with just three of them because it is pretty risky. Like, and also to bet again one, against one team for the entire thing, maybe not, might not be the best choice. But then if you, if you have to choose one team, it's got to be them, right? For the yeah. reasons you mentioned, I don't think refresh uh, probably. Really of it. Yeah, probably. But it's like okay, but when you look at Prof's slip, you're gonna see. Yeah, that's he has, He's disagreeing with you a lot. Uh, I am... because his odds are at like 35 or somewhere along those lines. Like I'm at like 4.1, I think. You're much lower than that. I'm even. like a 3.2 or something. I yeah, agree. 
you're, you're lower than that and the prof is at like 33 let's, so let's, let's, see. Bring let's, let's bring up his slip he, he can't be here and he obviously did it for the he memes. can't defend himself which is the main point <laughs> <laughs> look at yeah, this yeah let's go yeah so he went against you and the cloud nine mibr thing and like you said like i feel sense. like the thing is like look at those all of those bets right <laughs> cloud nine upsetting mibr an ip upsetting navi phase upsetting astras and then the last one is pretty a pretty sensible phase winning against cloud nine so that's like that's the, the it's almost weird that he put that one in the end yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I i would have expected him to, to just like go all in just go full ham but uh, like that was telling him this when i saw the slip and i can understand how each of those uh like upset bets could count could turn true yeah just because cloud and mib are being stand in match being a completely standard matchup um, each of those teams have standards. Each of those teams probably hasn't had really practice with those standards, so could just turn out pretty much any way we want. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I skipped that match completely. I actually think that 3.6 for phase is quite high. I mean, I could understand why you wouldn't bet it on it, because Astralis are so good and phase pretty high. 3.6 is insane. Like a low bet on that would make you a lot of money just. I don't understand. Yeah. Like it's the same. Sometimes Astralis bets are just far fetched. Like I remember we were looking at the, their chance to go to the final in ECS last time, yeah. and it was like one point one two. Yeah, and they're playing Dust two as well. Was interesting. They are for this matchup. Yeah, yeah. they could go anyway. Like, like if Nico goes off, the Vice has a bad game. What are you gonna do? I mean, it it might happen. I mean, but... it's still it's the, the the problem is like it's impossible to bet against Astralis almost. So like yeah, yeah. they I'm I'm pretty sure like if there was a bet for them to lose one match, I'd go for that just because like I feel like they're not gonna win all of them, most likely. Yeah. Or like it's it's finally likely they will not win all five games. And Prof so also... I'd bet on that. But like I I don't know which match they could lose. That's the problem. Like they could lose to Navi potentially. They could lose to Phase potentially. So like those teams, those two teams, they could lose to an IP. They did that at last at the last um, yeah, definitely. Um, blast. So like the, that's the thing. Like they could potentially lose to like three teams out of those five. Probably just looked at the one who would net him the most returns. I guess. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure about that. Because that's probably. the only Astralis game he has and on there. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I don't know about that. that that's possible, I guess. Although I mean, I don't see I don't see Cardinal having worse odds. So it's definitely not. It's not like he picked just the 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 best odds. Well, because Cloud9 must reason. have been at like five plus. There is no way they would. Because at least win. he doesn't have Cloud9 to win anything. Like at least he's. <laughs> oh, he does. He does. Have he does. To beat he does. That's the thing. <laughs> that one I feel like should be higher than Phase beating Astralis. Like I don't say. I don't think so. Not because of the, not because of MIB are also using standards. Like that's the that's a completely random one. I yeah, I, yeah. I would not touch that with a ten foot pole. Like I did, you feel like yeah, exactly. Like both of you did exactly. So, well, for in, in all of this, because this is obviously like group stage round robin. We know the format. Yeah. They they didn't play the standoff, and then they play a BO3 to win the whole thing. Um, and Astralis, I feel like I'm I'm wondering whether them having something to prove since losing Copenhagen is enough for them to go ham here when they just took like the most important title of the whole season at home so like redeemed that whole thing also won a lot of money and then have this just before going on vacation like i think this nip for me is like the most interesting choice here and also pretty sensible to win I the whole thing. i i i'm not jumping on any sponge bandwagons uh, so no. he called liquid <laughs> to win the major oh so right, right right i'm not i'm not jumping on that one i even i even tried to call him out on it i was just like asking for why he thinks nip will um will win blast because he said it with Fairly high confidence. He said something like high. There's high odds high of probability. Winning, yeah, yeah, yeah. high probability or something like that. Yeah. Which I feel like is uh, taking a little bit too far. Like there's high probability of Astralis winning it, and then like you have everybody else has low probability basically. So that's the that's kind of my thinking. And yeah, I'm not I'm not jumping on on that one. I could I could see them going into the final again, just based on what we've been talking about, like fatigue from some of the other teams um obviously um, standard situations and two teams so like nip have actually have a pretty good um chance of reaching the final there but then again like them beating astras because that's probably the team that we expect there as well that's probably not going to happen so the boring answer is <laughs> yeah exactly that's the 
I don't mean, like I said, it's just very, very hard. Now, these days, basically for the last half a year, it's it's been very hard to to bet against the straws. Of course, they lose some time. They will lose some time, but they will not continue to lose for long after that. So that's the problem. You don't think that the fatigue after the EPL thing? I don't think I don't think it's going to affect them too much. Like, like if it sure, was a really probably... long event, then maybe, but I don't know. It Especially go... with like their their level of um, I don't know what actually what to call it. But just like they're, ah, yeah, I don't know what to call it, really. Mm. Uh, let me think about that for a second. They're what, they're professionalism or they're like... I guess I, I guess you could call it that. But just that them um, really not under, underestimating anything and just like keeping 100% focus on, um, on most things. Sure, they also skipped events because of that, because of they didn't... Uh, they didn't really have the time to adjust in between events and stuff like that, so this could be playing a factor. But like looking at all the other teams, I just I just think uh, Strauss are still high, high, high favorites. Mm. All right, that will be it for the fifteenth episode of HL TV confirmed. I'm feeling kind of burned out. Like having Smoothie here for one and a half hour is that'll do anyone in, I think, <laughs> in a good way. I was just having fun, man. Like I couldn't even come up with stuff to talk about just because his his uh, rants. Flash, just like solos <laughs> were so good. I just I could just listen to them. As we can do, uh, if you guys have any questions for us, I know you had a lot for Smuya, and there were a lot of that the ones I didn't pick from like Twitter and and his own Twitter thing. Uh, there were a lot of questions that we obviously can't answer now. But if you have any questions, just put them in the chat right now. Um, we'll we'll try to pick up on them and 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 do every, everything we can to. To, to to answer them. Um, oh, he actually typed also in the chat. Have a nice time, team. Wait, what? He he was so kind as to write in the chat. I think as he was like, Smoya? yeah. Oh, fair enough. Actually, let me just look at. We need to we need to we need to do something that we haven't actually touched upon yet, and that's who's getting the poster striker. Um, oh, let me show you something. Because uh, there were already a bunch of winners. What we do each week is that we take the best question from Twitter that we ask for, highlight it, and then put it a, put it into like a, a, a topic of its own, of its own, and the winner gets a, a, a any image from our gallery as a poster that we get sent to them. Look at the one, the latest one that that's put on Twitter that that someone uh, just received in their mailbox, and this is his own choice, mind you. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's a good one. You, like he said, I went through HLTV to find the best Zeus pick, and uh, so this is what you uh, what you can get if you if you hit us with a good question. I think we need to. We got a few more of those like similar ones actually. I I don't remember which players, but I know we've got some middle <laughs> fingers out there. I get, I think Smui would like this one, right? <laughs> so uh, just going back, striker. Uh, which yeah. one which one should we then pick as the winner for this one? Was there a good question you think that? He was kind of answering in a funny way, or I mean, uh, he, he went. There off. was two. That like the thing is, like there was like a. It was so quick that I don't remember what the questions were. Like he was talking <laughs> by himself a lot as well, just like bringing up funny, funny stories and things. So it's like it's very hard to. to it's very, it's very to remember what the questions were. Even it's almost impossible, right? I think couldn't we pick the guy that asked him whether he was ever kicked out of a LAN arena for screaming too loud just to just for the funny just the story that came after that one with the midget calling him out for the <laughs> small person sorry i think i think let's let's say that this guy okay so this guy's called Harrison Whelan you won the poster my friend um way to go way to go probably didn't count on it i just think the story that it kind of uh ended up in was probably the highlight of the stream right so um so let's let's give it to this one. Let's give it to this this guy. I'll I'll I'll, I'll write you if you're watching. I'll uh, I'll get in contact with you, and we'll figure out a funny picture, or it can be any picture. It doesn't have to be anything with a middle finger or anything. Um, yeah. So I think I'd, I'd just go for Apex. Oh, the Apex meme. Yeah. You know you know it's actually up in the office. Yeah. It's a. Uh, and by the way, this guy, this this is the one you could act. You can you could choose this one if you want. You remember what it went? Was it the one where they had the big white headphones on? Which one was it? Uh, that was the it? minor. The or minor. not the minor, the main qualifier. Sorry. Like there actually are a for, bunch of good for ones the PGL major. Here it is. Found it. 
This is also the one I get at home, I think. Okay. Oh. This is also the oh, one right. I definitely yeah. would get at home. Yeah, that's that's the one I was talking about, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Need to put this man on land more to like um get more of these, right? So yeah. anyway, thanks for sticking around, everyone. Thanks you for all the great questions for, for Smuya, for us. And for staying with us throughout uh, the last couple of hours here uh, and thanks for keep staying with us in the beginning as well when we were uh, tuned out or when stuff crashed um, next week we will have a show on Wednesday also at 8 CET and uh, actually uh, one of the few players that he that Smuya didn't mention was a piece of shit in real life or one of the players that he on mouse sports that he said was a uh, was a friend of his that he Sees as a friend is coming on the show. It's uh, Stiko. Um, so if you guys want to watch an interview with him, I cannot promise that he will be uh, just as uh, candid as uh, as Moy was in this, or at least use as many cuss words. But it will be interesting uh, nonetheless. We'll get. Is to that going to be Wednesday? Did you say? Yeah. As well. Yeah. Okay. So next Wednesday, the nineteenth, Stiko will be joining HLTV confirmed eight uh, p.m. CET. So thanks for joining everyone. Uh, have a great night.